Power Query has a really powerful feature that lets us combine all the files in a folder. But what if the files that we want to connect to are not contained in a single folder? What if they're all over the network? We can't connect to an entire server and just filter down to the files that we want. Instead, we need to find out how we can connect to the files based on a list. And that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, let's suggest that we want to combine four files. You can see them here in this table. Each of those files has a different folder path. So it might be in 2022 P12 or 2023 P1, etc. Now there may be lots of other files in these folder paths. So therefore we can't connect to an entire folder just because there's too much stuff in there. Now let's just take a look at the first file. Here's an example here. It's a trial balance file and it contains account code and account and some value information. And all the other files are exactly the same. So therefore it's fine for us to combine them. You'll also notice that this has a tab called December and that's because it's the December trial balance. Each of our workbooks has a different tab name in each workbook. So therefore in our table, we've got the file path, but also the name of the sheet that we want to connect to. Let's start by loading this table into Power Query. So I'll click on the table and then from data, I'll go to from table slash range. So here's our table loaded into Power Query. We have the file path, the sheet name and the date column. Let me just change that to a date data type and I will replace that current step. Next, we want to get the code that helps us to connect to a single workbook. So to do that, I'll right click in the queries pane, go to new query, file, and then Excel workbook. I'll navigate to the place where one of those files is saved. I'll select it and then click import. In the navigator window, I'll select the name of the worksheet and then click OK. Now that this data is loaded, let's make the transformations to this workbook. I'm just going to remove the previous two steps. Then I'll come up to remove rows, remove top rows. I'll enter four in there and click OK. Next, I can promote the headers. That's applied the data types automatically. I'm happy to stick with those. I've got a null at the bottom, so I'll just filter that out. Now in your scenario, your transformations will be different. The key point is that we've got a single workbook that is now laid out exactly as we want the data. Because now I can go up to view and advanced editor. And I'm going to select all of the code and copy it. And I'll click done to close that. And then I'll head up into my list of files. So here's my source files query. And I'm going to click add column and then custom column. In my custom column, I'll call this data. And in the formula, I'm just going to paste in the code that we copied previously. Now there's a few amendments that we need to make to this code. First of all, we've got the hard coded file path. Well, we don't want that. We want whatever the file path is in our file path column. So I'll delete that and then double click on file path in the available columns list. I'm going to do the same with the item name. So that's now replaced all of the parameters that were used to determine what data we want to connect to. And when I click OK, you'll see I now have a column called data and inside each of those, I have a table that connects to that relevant file. I can now expand the column. I don't want to use the original column name as prefix, so I'll uncheck that and then click OK. Fantastic, and that has now loaded all of the data from all of those worksheets. So there's December's, January, February, and March. Let's just change these data types. For this example, I'm happy to change them to the data types that they were previously. So a whole number for account code, text for account, and value can be a decimal number. We don't need our individual workbook query anymore. So I'll select that and press delete. Yes, I want to delete that query. And then I can go to file, close and load two. And let's load that as a table 
on a new worksheet and then click OK. Fantastic, we've now got that loaded into Excel. And if we were to add a new row into this table, it would then add that data into our final query as well. Well, that's it. That's how we can use Power Query to combine all the files based on a list. Now, if you would like to take your Power Query skills to the next level, why not check out our Training Academy where we have a Power Query course to get you up to speed with everything in Power Query. To learn more, head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.